Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at Fedora's new installer. They have decided that their installer, which is called Anaconda, is a little out of date. It needs to be eaten up by a big snake, apparently, and uh, brought into the modern era. But anyway, we are going to have a brief look at what their installer looks like, which you can test out yourself now on the Rawhide, which is the developer's edition of Fedora. Now, what they had said is the biggest criticisms of the current installer is when they had made it it was based on some GTK aspects from a long time ago and you did have to jump around from a lot of different places it wasn't as streamlined as some other installers have been which is a valid criticism albeit it wasn't a major one as that the old installer was not all that difficult to use I'm you know, it wasn't like a lot of complicated things were going all over the place. You could pretty much figure out where you were. But yeah, there were times you were up in the middle of the screen. There were times you had to go into the bottom right corner for some reason to do something obscure. And then you had to figure out, do you have to reclaim space or not reclaim space? There's a lot of questions that a new user that is not used to installing operating systems might have a little bit of a stumble over. And so they wanted to redesign it utilizing a few different elements. Uh, first, they said they had here a uh, task oriented design. So they want to use the entire disk for a fresh install. Um, or they also want to share the disk. The same options we've seen from Ubuntu for a long time, where you could go in and very easily just say, erase the disk, use this, or... Uh, erase the unused po portions, shrink the partition down, and uh, install alongside. And I believe there's probably a um, something else option as well. So we have an option to reinstall, again, borrowed from the way Ubuntu's installer works, where you can choose to replace, install alongside, or erase the disk and do that. Now, the difference, of course, if you reinstall, uh, that's an option I've done once before. Um, reinstalling it just means it wipes out everything around your home folders and so all of your home folders systems and uh, settings for software will uh, will be worked around all that will be retained now it will not retain the software necessarily but if you reinstall software you have had previously the and the home folder has retained the settings you will go right back into your settings so that is uh, what they are attempting to accomplish. And they did want to mention that they want to uh, make it a lot more streamlined and easy to use. So that is the idea here. So what I want to do here is go ahead and have a look at the virtual machine where we're going to play around with this guy. I don't need to test the media. We've already done that. So we're just going to go ahead and boot this guy up, and this will give this the chance to play around a little bit with Rawhide. In this instance, we are only going to look at the new installer. All right, so we have landed on the desktop here, and it has automatically given us our install. So we have our welcome to a Fedora, we have a not now, or we have an install. Let's go ahead and hit our install option here. So we have under the first option, we have destination, where is it going? You want to hit our change destination. Now, in this instance, I have two hard disks selected. And the reason for this is I would like to see how does this system work? If there's multiple disks, can I choose where the bootloader goes. That can be important depending on your setup. I want to install the system though to the first disk, so we'll select that. Now up here is your three dots, and this is your storage editor. And this is basically for your more advanced setups. So what we found here is that you actually had to select a disk before you boot this up. If you do not select a disk, then it will say no disks found here and uh, there's no option. So that was the bug I thought I had found because I did not actually, um, I did not actually see any disks in there because if you only have one drive, it will automatically select that drive for the destination. If you have more than one drive, it will not select anything. So you're gonna have to manually select the disk under your change destination before you log your advanced configurations. Okay, so got that one out of the way. That might be a little bug or something. I don't know. I would figure if I know I want to do something advanced, I would be able to see all drives inside that setting, but I don't see any drives. I will only see the drive that's already selected here. 
So now we want to choose how we install it. So you can use the entire disk. You can share it with the other operating system. If there's not enough room, we can reclaim our space. We can do a mount point assignment as well. So you can set your mount points with your advanced options. We'll just use the entire disk. Now here we have the option to encrypt your data or not. So we'll go ahead and hit our encrypt data. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use a very simple password no one should ever use. This is just a QWERTY with a U after it, just to have at least something there. They do warn us that that's weak. You should never use something like that in production. This is a test. I want to see, are they forcing us to use certain things or not? So here you can see that we have a variety of different uh, partitions that are going to be deleted. It's going to create new partitions. Now, one of the things I'm noticing here, it says delete SDA1, SDA2, SDA3, and it's going to... Uh, Create SDA2, SDA3, and SDA3. Uh, I'm not sure why we get SDA3 in there twice, except for the fact that um, when you're doing the encryption, there's uh, two layers to the encryption. So presumably that is it. So it looks a little odd, but I think that that is uh, correct. So hit the erase and install this is kind of odd because what I don't see the option of is installing it under one configuration, but putting the bootloader on a different drive, which is something you might specifically want to do in a, in a situation where you have multiple drives on the computer. So that is certainly a limitation of this system. Other than that, though, it seems to be pretty good and the configuration seems to work. Um, but, in this instance, we don't actually see the ability to choose where the bootloader is. It's like the installation is going on this drive. That's where everything is going. Installation is going on that drive. That's where everything is going. There's no ability to select them in between like you have on Debian or Arch or, or things like that. So from here, uh, we'll let the installation go and then we'll have a look at what this looks like and then wrap up with some final thoughts. All right, so here we are logging in and we have to enter our decryption key. So here on the first run on Fedora, this is where you're going to start by setting your language. And we can do our typing. It's already set to U.S. English, so that's good. Privacy, location, services. I'm going to disable that. I'm going to disable automatic problem reporting. And then time zones. Let's go ahead and Monticello. New York. Here we go. I'll search and take New York. And then now we want to enable our third party repositories. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So they are disabled by default. And now we have to give it our name. Let's call this Fedora. And set a password. Set my super secret password that's definitely not 123. And now we can start using Fedora. All right, so having a look at the drive, the installer, how does it handle multiple drives and things like this. Overall, I really like this new installer. It is a much more streamlined, easier to see, understand, and follow system than we got in the previous version. Everything is streamlined. Everything is in the center. You don't have to jump around with the exception of that advanced options. Maybe that three hamburger menu should be down under their big scary red button warning advanced options. Um, also, it'd be nice to see that advanced options work a little bit better if you have not pre-selected a drive or maybe if that's underneath or on a next screen then after you've already selected your drive it might make more sense to put that down there rather than a hamburger menu that's not clear you have to select the drive first if you have multiple drives in your system well it's nice presumably being able to select the drive will completely protect the other drive which is a warning trying to install linux particularly if you're trying to install your average linux distribution on an sdb and there is an sda in the computer some of the installers will simply throw that bootloader on SDA even if you're installing on SDB. Some Linux distributions allow you to choose where it goes and that's the option we did not have in this one here. So that is the only real downside I find. As far as how everything else works and things like that, um, it will, I mean, it worked pretty nicely. So this new installer is 
actually excellent. Uh, I really like it. Yes, there's a couple of minor limitations to it, but this is definitely a big improvement in the direction, and it might be interesting to see how other distributions might interpret this installer for their distributions as well to see do we have those other options like choosing our file system or are we locked completely into ButterFS while the option to encrypt is good. Um, we might want to use a different file system in some instances. That's just one small point of criticism and maybe a little bit more clarity on using the system. If you have multiple drives in your system, a single drive in the system, it automatically selects the disc, multiple drives in the system. You have to manually select the disc before you do anything, including those advanced options. So that is my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about the Anaconda installer, uh, this new version in the comments down below. Do you like the old one better? Uh, what's your pros and cons here? Let me know all those in the comments. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.